QuickBooks Online 2022. Print, email, and create PDF of reports. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online test drive. Going into the test drive, we're going to be looking at the United States version of it and verifying that we're not a robot. Sample company, Craig's Design and Landscaping, holding control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're also going to have the free 30-day trial version open just so we can look at the business view and compare it to the accounting view. If you don't have access to this at this time, that's okay. We'll use it more in the second half of the course. Going back on over to the sample company, we're now going to be generating reports and thinking about how we might save and print those reports, possibly giving them to a supervisor or our general theory, our general practice problem and mindset being that we're an accountant and we're going to be giving these reports then to our clients at the end of the month and or end of the year. Going to the tab up top, right clicking on it, we're going to be duplicating the tab up top. Let's do it again. Put our cursor on the first tab, right clicking on it and duplicating it again. As this item thinks, I'm going to jump over to the free 30 day test trial just so we can look at where the report center is in the business view, which is under the business overview items and in the reports. If you went to the accounting view, which is in the cog drop down and go into the accounting view, you would have a similar view to what we will look at here in the sample file. Going back to the sample file, we're on the second tab. We're going to scroll down and open up a couple of reports once again. Go into the report tab down below. Closing the hamburger, we've been focusing in on the balance sheets type reports. I'm going to start out with the summary balance sheet though. Summary balance sheet or balance sheet summary as it's called here. Changing the date range from 010121 to 123121. Let's run it and then go to the tab to the right open up a standard balance sheet by going to the reports on down below and this time i'm going to open up just a standard balance sheet just the standard balance sheet close up the hamburger scroll up top range change it from 010121 to 123121 run it now we're thinking about getting these reports say to a client at the end of the month in prior presentations we talked about the concept of formatting these reports for internal and external use, which you might have different needs for them. Customizing the reports, which you can then find by going, I'm going to go to the first tab to the reports areas, and then you can go to the customized area, and then your reports would be listed here. We don't have them here because I'm logging back in every time with a new presentation. And then we talked about how we can take those reports and group them to give them to the customer or to management. One way we could do that was with the management reports, which we talked about last time, which is a great tool, but it's still somewhat restrictive in that you can't change some things related to it. So there might could be some restrictions to it. You might want some more freedom to do some other formats to give it to someone, which might be easier, faster, and or you can do more things with regards to the reports. Your other options would then be to go into your reports and simply email the reports. If I go into the report itself, I can email this way and I can email report by report. However, if you have a lot of reports as you possibly could have at the end of the month or year, that becomes awfully tedious and you're going to annoy the person that you're giving the reports to. So although that's one way to do it, it's probably not the most professional way to do it. You could also print the reports and then and then give them formally just as a printed report but you can also then save them as a pdf file and then you can zip the file of a pdf file so that when you email them they're going to be at least in one zipped file or you could put them on a cloud drive which possibly could be a more secure way of transmitting the files uh, put them on a OneDrive type of file or on uh, any kind of amazon storage or whatever cloud storage file the other method you could do is export it to Excel. And the reason this is a really nice method is because when you export it to Excel, you can also use Excel as well as a PDF printer, which we'll take, take a look at, which we're going to use a cute PDF printer, which is a free printer, to then make one PDF file with all the reports on it, similar to that management report, but giving you then the flexibility of formatting in Excel 
and basically then and then putting all of them into one into one report. So it might look a little less formal with the wording and so on uh, that the management report would have, but you can get all the reports in one place and you got a little bit more uh, format control in that method. And obviously, if you want to step it up a, a bit from there for more form out, formal and control, you can tie together Microsoft Office and Word and so on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to focus in on, on saving these items as a PDF and then zipping the files to provide to a client. So what we want to do is find a destination folder first. So I'm going to say, here's my destination folder. I'm just going to put them into a QuickBooks Online folder. You obviously might have your folder set up by client. So you might have this is my client folders and then within the client folders you might have your clients and then within that particular folder you might then sort your information by year maybe or simply by date that you're going to basically source your information by and then record your information into that folder. So I'm going to I'm going to go back on over this is where I'm going to put my stuff and I can then export it a couple different ways. I can actually use the printer and a cute PDF printer to make a PDF, or I can, of course, hit the drop down and make a PDF this way. I think it's useful to know how to use a PDF printer because uh, if you don't have a printing option in this program or any option, you can use the printing option to make a PDF. So there is a free PDF. I don't have any association with them, but if you go to cute PD, PDF printer, PDF printer, you could have access to, that's one thing you might look into with regards to a PDF printer. So this is the Adobe PDF printer. Here's the cute PDF printer. And so this is one option. You can look into other options, any kind of PDF printer that basically will, will take something that you're going to use the printing capacity to make a PDF out of could be a useful tool uh, in the future. So I'll keep that over here. I'm going to go back on over. So let's let's then print out some of these reports. Let's do it a couple different ways. Let's do it the first way, which is just to basically export it as a PDF. I'll get into the Excel in a future presentation. So now we're just going to make PDFs of them. Export as a PDF. And so there we have it. So that looks looks good. We have some limiting kind of formatting options here. So we don't have a whole lot of, uh, of formatting options, which is again, another reason if you have a very extensive report, exporting to Excel can be a useful tool. But we're gonna go ahead and save as a PDF from here, saving it as a PDF. And then I can open the file and show the folder. I'm gonna show the folder. So there is where it is being downloaded. I'm going to cut and paste it. Let's go ahead and cut that one. Cut it, cut it out and paste it right here. I'm going to make the view a little bit larger. And so then I can open that one up if I so choose at this point. We're going to open it up with the PDF. So let's open it up with Edge PDF file. And so there, there we have it. I'm going to close that back out close that back out. I can also open it with Adobe. Don't I have Adobe Reader? Open it up with Adobe Reader so you don't have to be online to open it. So there it is with Adobe Reader as well. Closing that back out and let's go back in to our next report. So I'm going to say that was the balance sheet. Let's go into that was the summary balance sheet. Let's go into our balance sheet now. And we're only looking at a few a few reports, the balance sheet and the summary balance sheet. Also note, I probably should have gone, gone here and done some customization for it as we've seen in the past, which would be like customizing it. I'm gonna say I want brackets around it for external use, removing the pennies possibly. And then down at the bottom, get rid of the footer maybe, and then save that report. And then I might customize it so that I don't have to do that again later and add a new group and call this our month end reports and then add that and then save it so that I can then in future at the end of the next month, for example, I can then just go into the first tab. We can go into the reports and in the customize area we've got our custom reports here that I can pull up and not have to format again. 
If I then go to the standard balance sheet, I could do the same thing. I could customize the report. I'm going to say I won't want the uh, without cents here, brackets, and then red. And then I'm going to put on the footer that I would like the no date time report basis and OK. I could customize that. I can save the customization of that report, putting it into our month end reports. So I don't have to do that again. And then I can basically uh, print it. So now I'm going to print it again. I can export it. Let's use the PDF printer this time just to practice it. Here's your printing options. So the orientation portrait versus landscape. And so portrait works well for the standard reports. Obviously, if it was too wide, you could try going to landscape. Uh, smart page breaks. So we're using the smart page breaks and the repeat the page header. So on the second page, if it was having two pages, the header would uh, stay there. Again, notice you've got some fairly limited kind of options with regards to your formatting here. It's interesting that they do give you some kind of kind of text options, adding text and adding. So this would be like format or like adjusting a PDF kind of options that you would have here, which is kind of interesting. It's not very formal looking, but it's kind of it's kind of interesting that those could be useful for like internal type of reports that you wanted to basically mark up in that format. But in any case, let's go ahead and this time I'm going to print it instead of saving as a PDF. Note that these two formats that we looked at exporting as a PDF and basically printing it take you to in essence the same place. But instead of saving as a PDF or emailing now, I'm going to print it and use the cute PDF printer to actually print the file. So here it is printed out as and notice it prints basically as a PDF. I'm going to hit the printer up top here. And then the printer I want to use then is see if I could find the cute PDF printer. Which isn't where is it? I don't have it here. Hold on a second. Okay, I've added it now. So we got the cute PDF printer just to show you that you could use you could use this option in this program and other programs when you don't have the capacity to save it as a PDF. We'll use it when we get to the Excel items as well. So there we have this, and you've got your printing options. So let's print it in that format. And then it's going to give me a little saving button. So there it goes. And then I'm going to, I have to name it here. I'm just going to call it balance sheet. And I should probably be putting the name in there. I mean the date, but I'll just keep it at that. So I'll save it. And so that's another kind of tool that we can be using. So I'm going to say uh, yes here. I don't know what it's talking about. Okay. So now we've got those two items here. Let's do one more. And obviously you can imagine that if we had the income statement and other reports, we can have a whole lot of reports that we would be dealing with. Let's do our, our next one, which is a little bit more fancy one where we're going to say we're going to make this as of 12, 31, 2, 1. Let's make this 12, 01, 2, 1. And then I'm going to do my comparative report, which is the drop down previous period, last month, dollar change, percent change, run it. And then I'll change the name here and make this a comparative comparative balance sheet. And I'll copy that. We're gonna, just going to copy that. And then I'm going to customize it. Going to get rid of the get rid of the report period. This thing right there, as we've seen in the past. I know I'm doing this fast, but we've got that item. And then I can memorize this. I can save the customization again saving the customization this time calling it a comparative balance sheet to the month end reports so that we have them in the future so if i go to my first tab and i refresh the month end reports maybe i could do it by clicking off and then back on the reports now we've got our three reports in there that are memorized or saved and then we can then let's go ahead and print this again as a PDF. Let's export it this time. We don't need to use the cute PDF printer. Save it as a PDF and then open it. And then I'm going to save it this time. Save it doing it the right way this time desktop. And then this is going into the the folder. What, what is all this stuff I have on my desktop? Navigation comparative balance sheet. Let's save it right there. Boom. And so now if I was to give this to somebody, now I've got these three reports, which I could, I could uh, give them three emails or I might want to zip the reports. 
Also, I might want to order the report, so I could put a little number before them. I could say, let's put it like a one here, and then, then actually that should be a two. That's like the second report, number two, numero dos, and then this is going to be number one, the summary, and then the comparative, rename, comparative so that might be a little bit nicer so they can at least see which ones you think they should be opening in order maybe <laughs> so because it'll be in order by the number and then we could put them into another folder and let's say let's put these into a folder and call them month and month is that how you spell it? end reports and let's put them into that folder just dragging them in there and then let's zip that folder right clicking that folder and send it to a zipped folder so now i could give it to someone in one folder in a zipped folder so that's going to be a little bit nicer than even an attachment with three different attachments and if we had 10 attachments it would be kind of a problem and in that zipped folder we have them kind of ordered when they should open them so that's a little bit nicer so now if we go back to our options here we've seen that we have the option of of making a management report which is a more formal looking but does have some restrictions and might be a little bit more difficult to to do we can basically email the reports we can print them or save them as a pdf we can zip the folder of the pdf to provide them in one email or put them on a cloud drive like a OneDrive or or any kind of amazon cloud storage or something that we can share with a client and next time we'll take a look at exporting it to Excel. And the reason we could do that is not generally so we can give the Excel file to somebody else, but so that we can use the Excel file in conjunction with the cute PDF printer to make one PDF with all the reports on it. So it won't look as formal as say possibly this report method, but it does give something with all the reports on one document. And then of course, if you wanted to get more formal, you could you can then use a combination of excel and word to try to, to make a formal kind of report and so on but so we'll talk more about the excel and creating a pdf all the files on one pdf using that method next time